How's it going, guys? My name is Stone. This is my friend Ian. You may have seen him here before. Hello. Today, we're going to be talking about a very special album, a very near, infamous album. Near and dear to your heart. Near and dear to my heart. Maybe near and dear to his. We'll find out right now, but if you didn't read the title, it's The Shag's Philosophy of the World. <gasps> <laughs> One of the greatest albums of all time. Is it better than the Beatles? We'll find out. Uh, let, let us tell you whether or not it is. Yeah, now, with, with our reviews. Now, this is a very special album to me. I've definitely had a shag space when I first heard this album, where, unironically, I would really listen to this album a lot and be kind of blown away by it. And it, not a stray too much, but it really expanded my mind to like, wow, what music can be popular? And popular is a strong word with this. It's definitely known. It's sort of. I don't know. This album is like. It's like a train wreck. Like you can't not listen to it. Mm -hmm. It's so. You're like on the rails and it's like. It's like you can't turn away. Mm -hmm. It's so bad that you just have to kind of keep listening. Mm -hmm. I mean, it definitely. It's a headache and a half. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Like, when I first heard this album, I can't remember where I first discovered it, I think it was through online, but it definitely took multiple listens to really appreciate. I remember hearing like the first song, I'm like, wow, this shit's wild. This shit's known, or this is something that can be, which I never thought you can make music this wild. And get. It sounds like they were just given drums and a guitar and a bass and were told to go play. That's kind of what I thought as I listened, tried to listen to this. Um, in full yeah. was and they're struggling you know? they're, str they're, str they're, str well, they're struggling good segue into the background of this album if you don't know i assume you do a lot of shags fans they're dedicated they know what's up they know yeah. the context they're woke they're woke but if you don't know basically austin wiggins their father got a palm reading by their grandmother his mom saying that he would like marry a strawberry blonde woman he would have like three girls and they would become famous musicians and i guess the first two happened so he decided to make the third come true thinking it was gonna like oh man my mom's right well she was kind of right i don't know what a mama's boy though austin was austin. wiggins oh what a name but basically from what i'm aware of he made them drop out of school and made them just like, hey, you're famous musicians, or you're going to be, so just start practicing. Even though they never really learned, or they were never properly trained. If you look at some stuff online, it's apparent that they knew how to write sheet music, which I think what's, is what makes this album work somehow, is the fact that they understood music, they just had the inability to play it correctly. And I think that's what really uh, makes this album kind of special. Because you, they're very sincere about it. Very sincere. Lyrically, musically, like, you can tell it's all sincere. The just execution is terrible. Exactly, but I think it's kind of the part of the album, or the aspect of it, that makes people want to go Listen back to more. it. Listen because like, it's like, you know, they're really trying. It's like, almost you know? nostalgic, thinking, I mean, I was never in a situation like that. God forbid I ever get in one like that, but I feel like, um... The yeah, context really helps. The too. context really helps, because when you show this album to people that don't know... They're... They're, they're just like, what the fuck? No, thank you. This isn't my cup of tea. I, I sent, uh, I love it when you're so near mm -hmm. to my lady friend. Oh, no. And she said, oh, I can't wait to hear it on, on the way home later, so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait. No, it's coming from the heart for me. Yeah. yeah. But, um, uh, i trying to think what else. I mean, besides that, let me ask, what's your first instincts when you first heard the album? I when know I, I showed you the My Pal Flip Flip. So, Stone showed me and I got it. Like, I understood, like, why Stone likes it and for memes. But after listening to the album in full, uh, I can really kind of... It, take, it took me about 15 to 20 minutes of list, like, really just like, oh, man, this is rough. And then I Love It When Year and Year came, came mm. on. And, like, I just couldn't stop laughing because I'm like... Okay, I get it now. Mm. You know, like it's it's kind of almost I like to think hypnotizing how bad the album is, which I don't want to say it's bad. Like I mean, you gotta admit it is badly executed. Good. Is even though I'm such a huge fan, and like I would give one of the Wigan sisters a kiss if I could, just out of appreciation, not even because I think they're attractive, but 
Take the mud beast thing. Nice. Uh, yeah, basically, I'm glad you decided to review that one with me because I know when I first showed him that he seemed like appalled and understandable. It's very weird. Context stone music. helps. Context helps. Yeah, context helps, but it's definitely stone music. Yes, I mean, if you guys see my channel, you might see stuff similar, but nothing's like this album. No. One well, thing there is one album kind of similar. Oh yeah, we'll get to that one. Yeah. But I'll say before we get into the track listing. Mm -hmm. um, Frank Zappa famously said, one of my favorite artists, I've reviewed him twice on this channel, that um, he famously called this better than the Beatles, which I think is well, crazy. Frank that... Zappa was a contrarian. Oh, yeah, he was a total, like, he would just say shit, just to, like, piss, piss yeah, people off. Yeah, piss people off. off. Yeah. He's Frank Zappa. And I think some fans took that too seriously, but I wonder where he even said that. Like, was that in a magazine or something? I don't know, but it's been around. And then famously, Kurt Cobain... Put this in his top five albums of all time well and that's maybe he's also kind of pulling a frank zappa there where he's just kind of trolling but i can also see this being like a punk statement in a way even though it's not really it's intended grunge. to be in that way it's grunge grunge before grunge it's, but Grove that's how grunge. grunge it is exactly it's like neo grunge it's so like i don't know i like to think of like punk and grunge it's like going against the grain going against the grain how that's what i think you can't go any more against the grain than this album. You can't, like, make something this wild with sincerity. Besides it, like, oh, I'm going to make a trash album, you know? Like, unless you're aiming to do that, which I don't think they use. It's, it's fucking punk were. rock. It it's is, punk bro. rock, dude. You can't get any more punk. Dude. This is punk rock. If you don't like it, well, then you're not a punk. You don't in get a, it. In a way. You don't get it. You're not punk rock. Exactly. It's like punk rock. And, like, the people... Like you that like like and me I think me now at this point you appreciate it I appreciate no no I I, I kind of like well let me ask do you think you could go back to song like man I want to hear some shags right now no or which is fine if you don't feel it but as long as I don't know I think yes when I'm in I the know. mood after the shags, I've listened man. to enough of like my music I'll be like okay I'll get a little refresher but it's just so like anti that like I that's why I, I need to listen to it. Like, I can just show, like, other people. And it's like, a good conversation It's piece. like, oh, listen to this. And they're like, what? Mm -hmm. And they're like, part of, like, liking this is, like, knowing that other people aren't going to like it. Exactly. That's you know? Like, it's like... It's like, I, I like... And I don't like to sound all cool, like, oh, I got better cool music or anything. But it's cool trying to show people music that they're not used to. And then they kind of either lie to your face and say, oh, this is nice. Or they just say, oh, like, this is actually bad. Like, I found something I don't like. Which is fine, you know? It's all subjective. Yeah. But to go into the track list now, we're going to yeah. begin with side one, of course, with the title track. The only song that doesn't have the title mentioned, Philosophy of the World. I have my cheat sheet because if you listen to it, it kind of sounds yeah, all like, the same. I'm a huge fan of the album, so I feel like every song is a little different, but I see what you mean. Like, yeah. This, <laughs> The second side especially, but we'll get to that. I mean, what do you think of the title track, though? You think it's a good opener? You think it sets the standard? It kind of lets you know what you're listening to. Mm hmm Like, it's just... It starts with drums, right? It's... Ding. Uh, it, it's well, that's foot to foot. I think it's oh, like, okay. boom, na 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 But it just slowly starts oh, like, going out of beat. Yeah. And then you're well, like... Well, okay, this is what I think about after listening to it. I can tell they were really trying... Like the first two or three songs. I'm like, mm -hmm. it's terrible, but they're kind of giving it their all. And after like the third or fourth song, they kind of just give up. That's kind of what I feel. It's like, I mean, honestly, I couldn't imagine being forced in this studio session by your dad to like record these songs. And that's what, what number is my pal foot foot on? Well, that's, that's like fourth. Exactly. And yeah. that's when it's like really starting to suck. Cause it's like, oh, it gets like more straining for sure. And that's what makes that song so good. Mm. But, I mean, with the title track, I do feel like it's definitely, like, I don't want to say it's it's one of the easier songs to listen to, I like to think. The lyrics are pretty good, just talking about people being ungrateful, like, all the skinny people want what the fat people want. That's what I really, yeah. All the boys with cars want motorcycles. All the rich and people the boys want with the, motorcycles yeah. want cars. It's oh like we God. just can't be grateful for what we have, you know, it's the philosophy of the world. Exactly, just like, no matter what, you're always going to want something else. And I will admit, too, the lyrics on here are really good for what they are, coming from, I think, 15 to 16 year old yeah. young women. And uh, I will admit, now that we're just talking about the music, the drumming on this album, it's 
I'm a huge fan of it only because you can't teach this exactly. inexperience. You can exactly. only be an experience of play like this. And the fact that they're somehow able to pull it off, pull it off. Yeah. Like the drums are like way out of balance, but they're still like somehow playing the game with them. I just, part of me was thinking like, once you get someone good at music, it's kind of hard to suck at playing music. Yeah, how to like purposely be bad. Yeah, consistently be bad. And that's why, like, I want to... They inspired me to kind of, like, try to think in that element again. Just because... It's different. It's different. I'm not saying, like, I'm going to play, like, the Shags to be famous. But just uh, play as the Shags to get my own original take on it. Because it gives you, like, a new, uh, new thought, especially when you start it. A new door, yeah. You're yeah. like, wow, this is... The new field of music I can experiment with, and then if people will criticize me, be like, "Uh, it's called outsider music. You don't get it." Na what'd you call it? Naive rock. Well, that's what I saw on like online. Someone called it naive rock. Kid but, rock. Or... Yeah, I I definitely say the title is like outsider music, which is basically from what I'm aware of, outsider music is when you just eliminate all ideas of music, like music theory. You're just doing your own thing in a kind of a naive but that's, way. But that's art. It is, it's art. And that's why I think this is very much art in its own way. Even if it's barely music. But you then you say. can't say art is bad. Because art is kind of what it... Art it's is subjective. just an expression of what you feel. It's like that one scene in It's Sunny in Philadelphia where he sees like the washing machine. He's like, that's art. I don't know. Yeah. If you've seen it, you've seen it. But basically, I'm getting off the rails. Second song, my favorite song from this album... That little sports car. I think this song is probably the tightest song. It's got a lot of good changes. I like the guitar riff it has, and I love the. I don't know. I love the singing too. Like if you really hear the vocals, like the vocal melodies, they kind of almost sound jazzy. The way they kind of like just. Or they sing on top of each other too. Yeah, like they. I think that one guitarist is playing the rhythm out of tune, and then the other guitarist is just playing the vocal melody at the same time, which I think. Maybe it makes it easier for them, but either way, I think this song is a banger. What do you think about it? Do you think it's a strong follow-up? Do you think it's just a... This song? Uh, the second song, That Little Sports Car. Or, yeah. My uh, Little Sports Car on the I kinda, road. I kind of, it all sounds my pal, the same until my pal foot foot. Okay, and then... okay, good to know. Well, I'll, I'll go straight to the third song, because I think the third song is a song I don't really like as much. It's called Who Are Parents. I feel like it's one of those songs that just sounds a little middle of the road for the album, which I know for you, I feel like much of the album probably sounds like middle of the road. I, I've listened to it twice or one and a half times now. One and a half times. Yeah. Crazy, dude. I listened to it the first time, and then I did it again for this review, um, and I couldn't get all the way through it, man. <laughs> Damn, bro. The first time I couldn't get all the way through it, the second time I did, and it was... It's gonna make a grown man cry. Oh, dude, well, anywho, I wrong. guess I guess I'll be doing a lot of the talking, but... I can talk on the second side. Perfect, I'm glad. I mean, the second side is a little rough, but... the, the Who Are Parents, I will admit, that song is kind of sad and disturbing in a way, because either it's like their dad wrote it for them, their dad forced them to write a song like that, or... Maybe they're going through, like, Stockholm Syndrome. You know what that is? Like is? I've heard of it. I forgot the exact term, but it's basically, like, you, you fall in love with, like, your kidnapper kind of thing. And, like, they kind of, in the sense, like, they're so... If they're sincere about the lyrics of who are parents, they're the ones who are always there. Like, it just sounds kind of sad because, obviously, their dad was very abusive, if you know what's up. Yeah. So it's kind of a sad song. It's a little hard to listen to, even if they're coming from a place of heart. Like they love their parents, or say a better pair. But if they did have better parents, this album would have never came out. So I'm not gonna say thank you, Austin. But but at the end of the day, I guess your mom was right. It's the philosophy of the, the world. philosophy of the goddamn world. But now we're going on to Ian's favorite song, probably my favorite song on the album too, the most infamous song on the album, My Pal Foot Foot. Give me your thoughts. It's bad. It's bad. It's really is bad. It the, is it the most bad song on the album? It's the worst song on the album, but the best. In a, exactly. I feel the same way. It's like the most mesmerizing with how bad it is. It's... You can't... It's like the train thing, I say. Like, you mm. can't... Uh, listen to this not listen to the song and just be perplexed on 
Like, as soon as the guitars this? come in, I feel like... It's like, just like, the, wow. I love the drums. Like, honestly, it's definitely the best song on the album. Even though I said that about that little sports car, I think My Pop Football is better in terms of, like, being, like... Terrible. Terrible, but also, like, representing the shags. Because of, like, yeah, it's the drum intro, shags. you kind of hear, you're like, something's off with the drumming. Like, it sounds like they're... They're slow, they're speeding up, and then you hear those guitars, you're like, what the fuck am I getting into? Yeah, it's into? just like, ding, 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 ding. Yeah. And then they start singing, like, my pal's name is put, 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 like, honestly, probably the best vocal melody on the album. Because, like, I go to his house, knock at his door, people come out and say, put, put, don't live here. I don't know. As you can tell, uh, it's a vocal melody I love singing. It gets stuck in my head. I know at one point I think it was... It's Halloween is my favorite vocal one. Okay, okay. Well, even Dracula might be there. But, um, it's definitely... You think it's a good representation of the album overall? Yes, it's... It's perplex... It's puzzling. Very puzzling. This album is all puzzles. The whole no album answers, is puzzling. No picture, just puzzles. The... It just looks puzzling. Like, you look at her hair, it's like she's trying to go Ringo Starr, but with long hair. Mm -hmm. And it's just one big Close. question mark. It's like... <sighs> Tell them, yeah. It's like someone giving you a riddle, and there's no answer or rhyme or reason to the riddle. You're just given the riddle, and mm -hmm. you can't. There's no answer. There's no answer very poetic and you just spend your time thinking about it well after that puzzling song we got another song that i think i honestly love this song if you want to read it um uh, my companion honestly the first like i honestly like the song overall is really good it's about the radio but the my first companion. three seconds bro is just amazing in terms of how awful it is like for me i remember hearing it and be like instant headache like because the guitars are just wailing <laughs> instant headache it's the great drum, the drums are doing like anything but keeping time like it sounds like if you know the song it's like boom boom boom, boom. like they're just kind of like hitting the drums in your ear the eardrums you know yeah but then the rest of the song is really good too but i think i had to give it to the intro it's just such a kick-ass and literally bad ass way of uh, starting a song and it's pretty catchy. What do you think? I mean, it's it, it, you said you kind of all the songs start blending after this. They do. It, I did. Someone remember it. Um, but oh, look, at, look at this. Oh yeah, this is it's cute. You know, it's sincere. Well, I mean, um, nice. They're the Wigan With sisters. The, yeah. I mean. Um, that song is alright too. Like I like my companion, but I think the closer inside one. I know you were talking about. It. It's called the. Uh, I know you call it. I love you when you're near. Right, I'm so happy. It's a when good you're song. Near. It's like that's when I finally like. I'm like, oh okay, I get it now. You know, like these girls are really trying, and it's just not good. But you gotta give it to them. No, I think I'm so happy when you're near is like definitely maybe in the top three. It's definitely one of my favorite songs of the album because like I like the little build up it has. Like obviously it's predictable with the chords. Like it's hard to hear because the guitars are out of tune, but they're just basically playing just like C G D. They're playing easy chords. Yeah. It just sounds so out of tune. Yeah, it doesn't sound they can't right. tell. But like the way it kicks off, like I'm so happy when you're near. I'm so sad. That's when what you're I like away. about a lot of these songs is like. It's the title. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just the title. I love it. I love it's it. like, Good like title. every song, almost every song just starts with the first like opening. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm so happy when you're near. It's I guess like, so that makes sense. I mean, besides like the title track, I think all of them do like that. Yeah. Um, but I think, okay, now we talk about side one as a whole. I feel like side one's the strongest just because it has the mo most perplexing songs on the album. My Companion, the beginning of that. My Pelt Foot Foot. My Pelt Foot Foot in its I entirety. I wonder, right? Uh, oh, that's second. That's okay. second side. But I'm so happy when you're near. I think that's a great song to show because when you show someone that song, even after a few Shag songs, and you play that, they're like, God. Ugh. Yeah, and that's what I said to my lady friends, that yeah. one. And it's like, out of all of the ones, it's like... That's a good one. It's sincere, though. You know, it's like, sincere. oh, I'm so happy when you're near. I'm so sad when you're away. Yeah. It's like, you know, they, they all mean what they're coming from. But... Even though I think the second side is not as interesting, it's, yeah, I feel like the lyrics all kind of have a cohesive sadness to them besides Halloween. That's Although the, the songs one. are kind of like, oh man, like he breaks my heart, 
And you can't really tell whether they're talking about a boy or maybe their dad even, which Probably wouldn't surprise me. But let me see this. The opening, I should know this. The opening, yeah, Things I Wonder. I think um, Things I Wonder is a pretty good song. I really like it because it gets, like, these songs on the second side, they're a bit normal Shag songs in a way where they just kind of like, yeah, they're bad, but they're not like interesting bad. They're kind of just like mediocre, but I still really like them. And I think they all work together as a whole. But I think, yeah, Things I Wonder... It's kind of sad lyrically talking about like, oh, there are many things I wonder, but I wonder why you hurt me. It's just like, ouch. Like They're definitely talking about their dad throughout this whole thing. They got, I mean, maybe they had boyfriends. And the like Stockholm them. Syndrome, you said too. Like the idea that they may have been just so badly raised in that environment that they kind of gotten used to it. Yeah, maybe. that's all they know, mm -hmm. which is so sad. So sad. I'm so sad when you're so away. So sad. And but I mean, do you have any opinions on things I wonder or... On the second side as a whole, if that makes it easier. It's just them really expressing how they feel. You know? And the sound of it is probably how they, like, the relationship with their father. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not good. No, I mean, I mean, I forgot. The second song, which I really like, Sweet Thing. Like, it's got a good vocal melody. You're such a sweet thing, sweet thing, but you can be so mean. It's kind of the same lyrical theme like oh why you be why you why you be so nice why you be and then why you be so mean you know <laughs> why you not sweet anymore and they're like no i don't know it's kind of sad listening to it but it's, a, it's still a catchy song I, again the drums on this whole album i should uh restate are really good in how they just kind of like do their own thing but they're also just doing the song i feel like for me that's what keeps the second side entertaining uh sorry i was getting warm in here i was just oh you got me blushing, but I don't know, what do you think? Is it just an, another Stockholm Syndrome song? Yeah, I think the whole album is. Okay, but now with Halloween, third song from Second Side, tell me your thoughts, bro. That's probably one of my favorite lyrical ones. It's Halloween. Mm, it's Halloween, you know, they just start listing off, like, dragons and gypsies, little... Dracula. Dracula, yeah, he might be there. Two he fairies, or... Oh, I forgot the rest, but... And that's about it. It's just, it's Halloween. It's Halloween, and... Tricks and Treats. Funny enough, fun fact, one of the reasons why this album kind of reached a wider audience, because I guess certain radio stations back in the day would play Halloween on Halloween. It's Halloween. Or it's, I think it's called And it's like Halloween. probably college radio, just memeing, right? Yeah, they're just memeing, you know, but yeah. imagine hearing that song. I remember seeing people on YouTube comments like, well, I heard the song on the radio station now that was like, what the it's, frick? It's Halloween. Yeah, like, or, what is this madness? But it's letting you know. But it's letting you know, you know? I think it's a good song that I put on my Halloween playlist. And honestly, this song, or this album, is kind of the perfect song for Halloween. You think so? I mean, it's not spooky, but it has like a well, naive, childish vibe. Well, it's just very unsettling. And Halloween is very... Mm -hmm. It's very... And um, the whole album is... You know, it's just a lot of, a lot of it's unsettling cringe. You could say it's cringe. I mean, if that was a word back in the day, it may have been. Cheap. I feel, yeah. Cheese. It would have been major cheese. Not even cheese, bro. Cheese it's is grilled like cheese, bro. Nah. Grilled. Far from, it's not even grilled. It's, fried it's just like unopened sliced cheese. Not even. I don't even know what, how you compare this to cheese, but. It's Gouda cheese. I can, you got me all flustered, bro. Okay, the last three songs. Why do I feel. What should I do? And we have a savior. I think Why Do I Feel is like another song I don't really like from this album. It has a really long intro. Like it's like do 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 do. It just does it for like a minute and it's like, I don't know. Shags, I, I, I like you trying to do Grateful Dead-esque jamming, but I don't think it really works. And then the song itself, it isn't like, it's more sadness, kind of like, oh, why do I feel sad? Why do I feel like this? Like they're really it, just asking. This is emo. It's Yes, it is kind of emo, bro. Pre-emo. Proto, proto mo It's pretty emo. Primo. And same with What Should I Do, which even though I think What Should I Do is like a good catchy song, sh catchy in the terms of Shag's music. Shag's catch. Like, what should I do? What should I do? Tell me, tell me. Like, it, it sticks in my head, clearly. And um, the singing is pretty good. I mean, the singing itself is just, I don't know. 
What do you yeah. think about the singing overall? You think it's bad? You think they're... It's sincere, I there's think. There's some of it... It's very sincere. They're hitting there's, the notes, almost? There's some of it where they follow up by... Pa, 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 like like that. the echoing kind of thing? I like it. I like it. it works. <laughs> I like it. It's funny. And then, uh, closing out... Probably the song I have the least to say, unfortunately, just because it's like... feels like the lamest song on the album is uh we have a savior not because it's religious in any way even though maybe that kind of makes it sad because... maybe they're talking about their dad oh i hope not i mean i haven't really read the lyrics but basically the lyrics are like why are people mean when they know there's a god like and i get what yeah i get what they're, where they're coming from but like i feel like as a song itself it just sounds like the most mediocre song on the album even though all these songs you could say are mediocre they have they still have something interesting to them even songs like uh, things I wonder is kind of catchy, but it's lyrically. a great way to close the album. It's Would you just say so? Like, what? Yeah, it is. I honestly, it's kind of like a. It is a confusing way to close the album because after all the sad shit they be rambling and talking about radios, Halloween. Well, they're, they're, t they're saying like you know like it's gonna, it's still gonna be all right. You know, it's gonna be all right. You know, I I like that idea. I am see that's why I that's appreciate why do, having. That's why we do these reviews. These reviews. Hey, you said the thing. <laughs> because yeah you kind of opened my eyes to something i never noticed because i've always thought the song was like for me i always thought the song was like so bad that it like doesn't make me want to start the album over usually if you have a good closer like, it makes you want to like oh man yeah. that song is so good i want to listen to the whole album again but this song and the second side as a whole in a way i'm not trying to bash the second side too much but i do think that when you get through the second side you're like man i've had enough shags for the, the day maybe the week uh, maybe a quarter Maybe maybe for the quarter, yeah. But yeah. But um Good album. Yeah, right, let me show off the vinyl though. I know he kinda showed you but nice little Wigan sisters. I wonder did they ever play live? Oh yeah, they um from what I'm aware of, they used to play at like local events like uh community centers and like, like cafeterias yeah. and they would get booed out of the stage. Oh yeah. For Let's sure. See. And um it also okay, this is a third man sorry, let me see. I'll show off the vinyl. I forgot. It's, uh, what record is it? It's uh, Third World Records. So this came out like within the last five years. Second side I was playing. Don't tell YouTube. And then well, there's no bass. It's just two guitars. Oh, yeah, it's just two guitars, yeah. Wow. And then uh, it comes with this little thing. I feel ashamed I haven't read it all in its entirety, but I did skim through it a little. It comes with the cool photos of the girls. You can find Austin in there somewhere. Let me see. Pretty neat stuff. Is Dracula oh, in there? I wish. You see. And then, yeah, this is super cool. It's got the sheet music. So that's kind of dope. See, it makes you appreciate them more as musicians. Yeah. Or maybe more composers than musicians. But I have the flex. Obviously, I'm wearing the shirt. I'm a big Shax fan. I have to get the merch. You know, my pal Foot Foot. And then what else? I mean... They tried. Fun fact too, if you weren't aware, they uh before COVID happened, they the two sisters that are alive still, not the drummer unfortunately, uh they were actually touring as the Wiggins band, covering some of these songs, playing them live. Like you should listen to like them playing My Puff Foot Foot live. It's uh pretty crazy how accurate they do it. I mean there's all there's also cover bands out there you can find on YouTube that play this stuff. But it's something else. Imagine playing a show and like you're good and then you just end on that. Like this. Honestly, bro, that's the. For memes, I'm it's like getting. For memes, you know. It's like you... getting rickrolled. Rickrolled. And now to your favorite. Well, be before we get to that, I gotta ask: Do you feel like this album deserves the fame it has? Do you feel like? Yes. A hundred percent. So. Do you find it to be original? Do you oh, find it's it very innovative, or do you feel like it's just more original than innovative? It's original. It's more original than innovative. Um. But then you could argue it's innovative too because it's helped you cut or maybe me and I think even down the road, but it's helped like you said you kind of like think about different ways of going to approach music, mm -hmm. which is pretty innovative. Um, but I think it's definitely more um, like a novelty. Yeah, like it's a boutique. I, I think that's what I'm starting to realize, too, because I, I really do love this album, even though I was kind of maybe saying some of it's bad. You can't ignore the flaws that it has, but, like, it's still a very unique experience that I don't think any other 
band can do so or any other artist maybe besides like other outsider music like jandek which is like still a totally different type of weird can Oof, i don't even know if you call this can that'd be crazy i mean you guess you could i don't know how you compare it to can but i kind of i don't know the drums are way better on cans yeah but i do think one album that can be compared i brought it up earlier i know another album ian really likes that i'm gonna be Getting too soon on my channel, one of my favorite albums of all time, honestly. Not even trying to say it's a troll. Trout Mass Replica, Cat and Beef Fart. I gotta ask, do you feel like these two albums are comparable in any way? Yes, but I will have... I thought about this. I like... Th they're both bad. This is terrible. Like, this, I can't... Which is, okay, which is better, though? Wh oh, the Shags. You, with, without, so you find the Shags better? Without it by a Crazy. thousand percent because of how sincere it is because they actually hold on no, go ahead, no. because they they really like you could tell they put a lot into this with this okay oh, you're gonna get b part fans pissed that's go ahead. fine say that's say, fine. say your say it say it, bro that's fine with this it's just it's it's like we <sighs> He doesn't know the history, folks. It's not that I do. I know the history. You know the, the house. I know the house, and he made him eat beans, and they made him read terrible poetry. With this, it's just like, it's like let's just make something that's just absolutely garbage, and let's be different. And like he's trying too hard to be different, which in art I get and I appreciate, but he's trying too hard to like, be something, and it just really kind of grinds my gears and i don't like it no, i'm sorry no it's good to know. I mean, but the shags i love it's good to they're know. sincere i think captain beefheart is i like to think he's sincere i mean like maybe the way it goes about music is i mean I, I, not to interrupt my own statement but i will compare these two albums i feel like yeah please they both provide a very anti-mood in a way like it's just so out of left field that it throws you off no matter what kind of music you've heard previous to it and even though the biggest difference here is that the Shags, they were trying their best to write normal music, but they couldn't, they couldn't they do it couldn't well. Execute. As for Captain Beefheart's band, the Magic Band, they were capable of writing normal songs, but the fact that they were trying to do something so left field, they became good at writing bad songs, or at least, you know, these jagged rhythms and all that. I and feel like this it's is... unintentional here, but it's intentional here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And... I feel like this is what like, you listen to when you go to hell. Just on repeat. Hell yeah, bro. Bill's Corpse, you know. <sighs> neon Meat Dream of an Octofish. <sighs> hair Pie, yes. I think Hair you, Pie Bake One. Af what were your thoughts um, when you first heard these two albums? Well, okay. I had similar experiences where I discovered the albums online. I only listened to like, a, f a few songs. And then it wasn't until like much later down the road I decided to listen to the album in its entirety both albums and I think with both albums I kind of learned to appreciate them more and they definitely grew on me after w multiple listens especially Trout Mess because there's a lot of songs that even up until like a month ago I've been listening to this album for like a year or so now and there's songs on the album that I never cared for at all that now they're hitting me now I'm like wow like now they're getting stuck in my head I don't know how this came to be and I guess with the same way with the Shags, even though the melodies were easier because they're just kind of like sing song it's cute. Yeah. It's cute. This is just putrid, and I don't like it. Hell yeah. But that, but that's art. We can talk about it. Exactly. No, that's that, the great no, thing good. about art is like we could. We all we us, all us come three, together. Like POV. And we kind of just talk about it. Mm. That's why you see these shitty ass uh, pictures of art in galleries, because it's just. It's not there for to like try to look cool or be this or something. It's for there for you to, you know, analyze it with yeah. someone and interpret in your own way. Interpret it in your and own way. And that's what I like about music. That's why I like bringing people like Ian on the show. People that have different music tastes but are still open minded to check out new things exactly. and talk about either why they like them or why they despise them. And uh, maybe if I do a review on this, I'll invite you. But there's like 28 songs in here, so I don't think if you could get through this. I don't know if you get through hey, this. Hey, you know what? You should be happy that I... I, I, uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And I, I appreciate the, inter the, the interview. Oh, you should talk about the releases. Hmm? The releases. Oh, well, yeah. Funny enough, before we wrap this video up, because it's getting long, like 35 oh, minutes. Nice. 
But uh, apparently, this album came out the day before Trial Mass Replica came out. So just imagine you walk into a record store. Imagine Ian. You're Ian. This is Ian. 1967? Nine. 1969. Nice. For the 60s, though, that's crazy these albums came out. But at the end of the decade, you walk into a record store, you're like, ooh, the Shags. You're like, wow, this is this looks appealing. You know, My Foot Foot, Foot, who's that? You know, you buy it, you hate it. You know, especially in the 60s. You know, Daft away. Punk. You didn't have any of that no. back in the day. You didn't have the toadies. Toadies, no toadies, no Daft Punk. No Possum Kingdom. No Possum Kingdom. And you're like, well, let's say you throw it away, but you have enough money for another record. And you're like, man, I hate this. I want to go buy a new record tomorrow. And then you see, oh, the, a new record? Wow, who's this? Captain oh, Captain Beefheart? Beefheart. He dropped yeah. something a few years ago. Yeah, like, good. Oh, that Safe as Milk. That's a good album. Yeah. That's a, like a normal album in his catalog. And then you put it on and you're just like, man. Does music suck? And you're like, am I, am my ears not working? Yeah. Funny enough, um, I, there's a video online of the guy who created home, uh, The Simpsons. He's a huge fan of this album. Of course he is. He bought this album merely because Frank Zappa is the producer of this yeah. album. And then he, if you watch the video online, he's like, oh, the first listen, I was like, oh my God, this is trash. Like, why would Zappa do something like this? And mm. then he listened to it again. He was like, okay, I can kind of hear it. Like, he, he realized, oh, they're doing it on purpose. And then after like the fifth listen, he's like, it was one of the greatest albums ever. So that's kind of cool. I know, uh, not to talk about this album too much, but Red Hot Chili Peppers guitarist, I forgot his name, but he's a big fan. But yeah. Whew. Thank you guys for sitting through all this. I know you guys decided to sit through 36 yep. minutes. And 38 seconds. 38 seconds. Woo. I really appreciate your all's time. I appreciate Ian's time. Big business, big business, shake hands. And please leave your thoughts and comments down below. Trash us if you like. Love us if you like. Do whatever. Just don't find my address. Yeah. But, yeah. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you all Thank in you. the next video. You'll see him around soon, swear. Bye. Bye. Bye.